Hey, thanks for joining the All Stars Cars channel. I'm Glenn, and today we're going to check out the clunk in this 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe here behind me. When I say clunk in the front end, you're going down the road, you hit a bump, or even if you're going slow, 20, 30 miles an hour, it's almost more prevalent over a small bump. Maybe you're going into the driveway and you're hearing this clunk sound. Well, I'm going to help you diagnose what that issue is. So why don't I take you down to the car? We'll get a closer look and let's figure out what it is. So I was driving this car the other day. My wife owns it and she didn't hear a thing. Uh, go figure. Maybe she blasts the radio. I don't know. But I drove it and within two minutes I could tell just leaving the uh, neighborhood, hitting small bumps. I could hear a clunk sound. Okay, that's the only way I could describe it. Also going down the highway, I noticed a little bit of wandering. So you're trying to track the car straight down your lane and you feel like a little sway. Well, that might be a key word right there. So what I like to do is bounce the car. We're just static here, nothing's jacked up. I'm on the concrete and I'll bounce the car and listen for any abnormal noises. Let me see if I can hear anything here. I hear it, you probably can't pick it up um, on the camera, on the mic here. What I'll do is I'm going to put the camera under the car. Let's see if we can hear it that way. I've got you guys set up at the left front suspension at the lower control arm and the strut there. I'm going to bounce the car just like you saw and let's see if you can hear anything. So I want to take you through my thought process here real quick as far as what could be going on. So you definitely heard the clunk. I heard it. You heard it. Now we need to figure out what it is. So going down the road in a smooth, whether it was 20 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour and it was smooth, there was no noise. Uh, so I lift off the accelerator. I listen as the wheels are rotating, the drive line, the drive, sh the shaft shafts and the drive shaft. This is an all wheel drive are rotating. There's no clunk, no noise. So it must be related to the suspension system or possibly something in the steering. So what I'm doing is, you know, going over a bump, maybe 20 miles an hour or less. I hear that clunk. The wheels are obviously going up and down. The suspension is loading and unloading. And that's where we're hearing it. So that's where we're going to go to. So I've got the car jacked up, the tires off the ground here, and I'm just taking a big pry bar, crowbar, and you could use a piece of pipe going under the center. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to lift up and I'm going to simulate the suspension loading and unloading. Now, this is also a good way to check, you know, for a bad bearing. Uh, you could check for a bad ball joint, upper or lower, and that, you know, if you have that in this case, we just have that lower. We have an upper strut, and what you do is lift up and listen for any abnormal noises. Now, right now, I don't really feel anything, and I don't hear anything obvious. You can reach back and kind of feel the strut, the spring, just make sure you don't feel anything wobbling. Then what I'll do is grab this left to right, and I hear a little bit of clunking, but that's that's normal, that's nothing crazy. Then I'll grab it like this at the 12 and 6. The bearing's definitely tight. This way, we're checking the tie rod ends. Nothing is excessively loose, okay? So it's a little bit strange right now, but what I want to do is take the wheel off and take in a little bit deeper. Off. I turned the steering wheel to the right so we can get a better look at the suspension and steering components here. So anyhow, you know, this is our brake caliper. Everything's tight there. This is the steering rack and this is our outer tie rod end. The boot is in good shape. It's tight. You know, if I grab it, there's no obvious slack or slop in it. Uh, this car has 115,000 miles on it. But anyway, there's our lower control arm. Let me get down here and film this for you a little better. So right here, this is it. Oop, where am I pointing? Right along here, this piece right here. And that leads us to the outer ball joint, which we just checked with our 
pry bar or crowbar we pulled up and down and if there was any slack or slop in there we would definitely want to get a visual on there if that's moving uh, that needs to be replaced so that could be cause for a clunk uh, here's our strut when I don't see any oil leakage spring looks good and what else do we have as far as checking the, the that control arm lower control arm here there's a bushing back here let me get a crowbar on there for you pry bar and it's normal for some up and down oops here we go you know I don't know if you can see that on camera I'm pulling I'm pushing a swiggling this that's okay a little bit up and down is good that's fine with this as long as that bushing back in here that rubber bushing does not look ripped or torn then it, it definitely has a problem you'd want to address that and then on the other side we come over here where that yellow paint mark is let me point to it with the, it's a little bit tight to film here. Right here, this piece, I go underneath that, right in here like this, let me get you down here. Sorry about the shakiness there. And then I'll just up and down that, nah, that view's not that great. Let's go from the top, let me bring my light around. We go for it here, the Ozdars Cars channel. <laughs> All right, there we go, now you can see I went in right here up and down there's no movement okay so it's tight that's good that's what we want to see now pretty much the only thing left here we do have the half shaft this axle right back here grab onto that shouldn't be any excessive play a little bit of play is okay in and out okay i don't know if you can hear that clunk that's okay that's probably only a couple thousandths of an inch and that's normal. We've looked at all the other suspension components. The only thing left is this sway bar. That's this big round piece of steel. And it ties this driver's side to the passenger side. And that has a lot to do with the handling of the car. When you're turning left or right, it helps control lean so that the car won't lean as much. And it helps with cornering. Basically, it transfers the load from one side to the other, and that's how this works. It's a very important part. It doesn't look significant, but it does a big job in the handling of the car. Now, this sway bar here has two bushings. There's one, let me see if I get it. It's right there, a rubber bushing with a bracket, of course, and then there's one on the passenger side. Visually, they look fine. They're not hollowed out. They're not cracked. They're not broken. That brings us to the end link. So there's a joint here. And the way this is held in on the ends here, or transfers the load, is through this sway bar link, it's called, this end link. So here's the strut tower. This one happens to be bolted here to the strut tower, that this design. And then it comes down and obviously connects to the end of the sway bar. Well, this is highly suspect, okay? So let me tell you what I did here in the next step. Okay, so off camera what I did was both tires were on the vehicle, it was on the concrete. You saw me bounce the uh, car. So I'll give you a quick, easy way to find the issue here. What I did was I got my son Ryan, who was my helper, I got him to get under the car while I bounced it, you know, it was on the ground. Uh, it was safe, you know, you didn't need jack stands or anything. I had him listen, come up behind here, if you can see where I'm pointing, and listen and he could hear visual or audibly the noise. He didn't see any movement like anything out of place and I told him to grab on to this sway bar end link. As soon as he grabbed it, he could feel the vibration when it was clunking, okay? So in this case, this one is not as bad as some of them that I've seen. Uh, I looked through my metal scrap pile. I couldn't find any of the old ones. That I've, I must have uh, scrapped them already. But when they're really loose, the joints on there, it looks like the end of a tie rod end. They're, they're just miniature. They get really worn out. This one isn't worn out enough where you can actually grab onto it and shake it. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, he's 16. I wanted to make sure he was giving me the real deal here. If you have teenage kids, you know what I mean right now. Anyway, um, what I did was, let me show you. Let me grab this here instead of... Emin and Amin. Let me get the camera over on here. And so I came over here. Now I didn't have to take the tire off. I took this off to show you guys. What I did was actually disconnect the upper. This is called the end link here, the sway bar end link. Disconnect this joint. So I just zipped this nut off 
push this back so now the sway bar is not connected then with this thing flopped out of the way which I'll do for you in a second then with the tires on and everything I bounced the car up and down and that clunk that we heard earlier was completely gone so I isolated it to this sway bar so this one was a little bit tricky when these suckers are really bad you can literally like grab onto it um, especially if both wheels are on both tires are on the ground or both wheels are off the ground I'm gonna explain that in just a second and when these are real bad you can grab them and they'll actually clunk right here in place this one still feels tight so it's kind of deceptive it would be hard to diagnose if you didn't know or have the experience to do that to you know figure this out so let me explain to you why it's important that both wheels are either up off the ground, the tires that is, or they're both on the ground. What's important to know is, and this is very important, so bear with me, maybe you're falling asleep, maybe you're about to skip, don't do it. If you're gonna do this job and you don't have experience, you're gonna wanna know exactly this procedure to get these off. So this is a jack stand under here right now. We got this, obviously this tire is off. The passenger side is still on the concrete. So basically I just have the one side of the car up now we're going to remove this upper link here and this is a 17 millimeter let me get a wrench what you need to do is there's a spindle here right this actual joint and there's a i can't show it to you on camera but back here trust me a 17 fits to hold that from spinning so let's grab our gun or impact let's take this 17 nut off and do this one-handed hopefully that wrench won't go flying Okay, it didn't. That's good. Let's get the nut out of the way. Now, what I want to show you, here's the key. Okay, so you're like, well, I got this nut off. Maybe you got the bottom one off. And you're thinking, that well, comes out, right? So you grab onto it with all your might, and it may be tight. It may not want to move. In other words, this won't want to pop out very easily. So what you do is you come over to the passenger side. Now you can do this with both tires on the ground. I just took the, the tire off to show you guys the wheel off to demonstrate. So let me jack this up real quick. Let me make sure I'm gonna be lined up here. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna get this tire off the ground. And if you didn't notice, I straightened the wheels too. So the wheel's straight now, it's not turned to the right anymore. So this is off, okay. What that does is takes the pressure off the sway bar, so it's not transferring the weight from this side to this side. Okay, and with the weight off, we should be able to just push this right out. So bingo, I mean, it was like no effort. And now we'll do the same with down there. We'll just remove that bolt, that nut. I don't know why I keep calling it a bolt. Pull this joint out here. Can you see it right down there and we'll get the new one so here's our old end link and there it's the same upper low like you can't get them crossed if you put it in this way you know or you flip it this way it's it's going to fit so the left and the right side are the same but what you would do is just move this around now this one isn't like super stiff but it's not wow it's not real loose either which is kind of deceiving because when they're really bad and clunking like real bad this thing like this end is much looser can you see i can move that with one finger and sometimes oh i can kind of feel it a little bit maybe you can hear it okay in and out it is worn out where this one which was at the bottom is i can't move it that easy with one finger i can but um it's, it's there's no in and out so that's, you know, 100%. This one is shot. Should be no movement this way. Let me get the replacement. Okay, I'm going with the Moog. I know, I can hear it already. They're mooing for the Moog. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I really don't have problems with Moog. It's there. I know I've heard about their quality, but I, I always go with them if I don't go OEM. And I'm going to tell you right now why I went with the Moog and not the OEM. The Moog, this is K750659. I'll probably link it in the description down there for you. But the reason I went with the Moog, and it does come with new nuts on the end here, 
is it has grease fittings. So hopefully that's showing up. Anyway, each end has a grease fitting and you can usually get a lot more time out of these joints if you grease them regularly. So, you know, I'm moving these here. This one's really stiff. Okay, much stiffer than the other one. Of course, there's no in and out play at the moment anyway. Now, this is a good shot of the, what I was telling you about, where I was grabbing with the open end wrench right here. Remember I held that? And you're gonna need to do that with this one. This one, the aftermarket is not a 17. Let me get a wrench for that. All right, so the Moog is actually 18, 18 millimeter nut and an 18 on this uh, spindle here that you grab. So that's how you grab onto it. I hope my lighting's okay. Let me show you here. So you can see how you actually fit on there. So when we go to tighten this down, we won't have any issues of that spinning. Let's get the new Moog swipe bar link in and this grease fitting I'm going to put out this way so it's not pointing towards the axle. It'll be easier to get to. And then the top one here is just pointing down and towards the front. So we'll slip the bottom one in and then I'll just get that nut started. Of course you can't see what I'm doing, but you guys know how to tighten up a nut. All right, just get it started on there. And then let's get the top started. Real simple. Like I say, if you have both wheels on the ground or you have them both off, it's, uh, it's real cake to slip these in and out. If you don't, you're gonna know it. Now, the nuts here, this one and the lower one, are tightened to, the specs call for anywhere between 72 and 86 pound feet. So I'll probably just torque them to like 75. That's good for me. And let me get my gun set up. We'll start with this top one. I'll just get it started. And then I'll bust out the torque wrench. Oops, it's spinning because I don't have it. I haven't got on the... Right. I got to make sure I'm in uh, forward. There we go. your wrench doesn't get stuck in there either <laughs> there we go I heard that change in pitch so now I can grab my torque wrench for that one the bottom one I've got to tighten by hand with that top nut snugged let me get my wrench on there and I got my torque wrench here set to 80 pound feet or foot pounds whatever you want to call it let me get my light out of the way there we go let's uh, crank this down oh boy she's tight Ah, oh, man, that sucker is tight. They don't want that going anywhere, I'll tell you that right now. Let me hold this wrench, it's a little tricky. There we go. Okay. All right, let me get that bottom one. Let's get some 80, 80 action on this. Good thing I ate my Wheaties today. Oh boy. We've got to wait for the click. There it is. Okay. Woo. That's 80. We're all set. Now, let me grab the grease gun. We just got to grease this Zerk. These are called Zerks. Uh, this grease fitting. Zerky. And then the other one up there. We'll put some grease in there, and then this side's done after we put the wheel on. Okay, got my grease gun here, and I don't know about you guys, but man, this thing leaks out of the bottom. I bought that red grease. I forget what brand it is, but it seems to bleed all the time. So I gotta be careful here. I don't want it to drip on the camera. Anyway, just push that in there, and um, while you're giving us a squeezy, what you wanna do is, as soon as you see grease like just barely coming out of that boot there, you're done. You don't have to over grease it. Oh yeah, it's bleeding all over this gun. I'm pumping it, did you see it move? I don't know if you guys could see that, but it's starting to push out a little bit, there it goes. I just saw the grease ooze out just a little bit, we're done. That was like three pumps. Three pump chump, let me show you this blood here. That's what I call it, look at this thing. If you guys know of a grease that doesn't leak out like this, let me know, look at this mess. 
See this? It just drips out of here all the time. It, all right, let me grease the upper one now. See, I got you guys zoomed in, so you should be able to see it better if you missed it. Let me pump this a couple of pumps and try not to let this bleed grease onto the brake pads. Yeah, let's watch it. Oop, let me get this out of your way. I'm pumping, there's three. There we go. Oop, just started squeezing. Done, pull this out. Looks like they already have grease in it because their stuff is like a yellowish tan and ours is red. With the stabilizer link torqued properly, greased in this case, uh, if you bought the OEM factory ones or maybe the cheap Chinese ones, they don't get greased. There's no grease fitting. So you don't have to worry about it at that point. I'm going to put the wheel on now. Those wheels get torqued to 80 pound feet and uh, set the car. Well, actually, I'll leave it up because I'm going to do the other side. Uh, I won't take the wheel or tire off on that side. I can just knock it out from behind it below. If you got a lift, this is even easier. It's total gravy. But anyway, let me do that and then I'll fire the camera back up. Alrighty, back from the test drive. Everything went smooth. The car is much more stable on the highway as far as you know drifting left or right. And I'm not hearing that clunk anymore. This driver's side was definitely worn out. Now the passenger side link here is a lot stiffer than the driver's side was for whatever reason, I don't know. But I replace them in pairs and I suggest you do too. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button down there. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those. Check me out on Facebook, that's OzStar. Instagram is OzStar1. I appreciate you taking time to stop by. I hope the video was helpful and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.